about you, Kevin? Hello. Hello. I am here. Is that you, Kevin? Are we? Well, it is me, Kevin. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> number. I should probably write it down. <laughs> That's so all right. With me. So, Victoria. She's not here yet. He's got some there. I know, huh? Do we have more of it today? Uh, not very long, no. And Charlie has to can can only give us about forty minutes. He's got another meeting after this, so um, we should be pretty pretty quick. Okay, but we do have a quorum. We should have a quorum, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. Victoria will be with us shortly. She's just emailing the link again to uh, Keith. Oh, okay. Have you started recording it? Yes, I just started. Thank you. Okay, so time being 601, I will call the meeting of the Freetown Conservation Commission to order. We do have a quorum. Um, before we get started, I'll briefly read the governor's order. On July 16, 2022, Governor Baker signed into law an act relative to extending certain state of emergency accommodations, which among other things extends the expiration of the provisions pertaining to the open meeting law to March 31st, 2023. Specifically, this extension allows public bodies to continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum for the public body physically present at a meeting location and to provide adequate alternative access to remote meetings. This meeting of the Freetown Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public can be found on the Town of Freetown website, freetownma.gov. Okay. So, Victoria, you're sending that over to Charlie, you said? Yes, I am. Okay. So, since we have a quorum, I guess we can get started. So the first thing on our agenda tonight, we have a request for determination of applicability. This is for Zero Washburn Road. The applicant owner is Carlos Abad. 
Campo Verde, and the scope of work is clearing a small path to the pond. So uh, again, if there's interested parties on the Zoom and or members of the board, if you would like to follow along, go to the town's webpage, freetownma.gov, go to Conservation Commission on the boards and committees. On the left-hand side, you'll see current uh, Conservation Commission filings. You can click on that and you can follow along with the PDFs. So do we have somebody here from uh, Washburn Road? I don't see anybody on. Okay. So my only thought was, um, it seems pretty innocuous. They own the parcel across the street from their house. They've just bought it. Uh, and they would like to cut a little path in it, apparently, as explained to Victoria, um, uh, so that they can bring in, um, at first the conversation was canoes and kayaks. Um, today, Victoria uh, had another visit I, from the applicant and was asking questions relative to, uh, can we bring in a jet ski or a little motorized boat? So, Excuse me, um, Kevin, I, I think yes. Carlos Abed is here. And isn't this his property? It is. Oh, yes. Looks so like he, he just joined. Okay. All right. So, thank you. Uh, is Carlos or um, Carlos. somebody here representing Zero uh, Washburn Road? Carlos C. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, as I was just briefly stating, we were, I had reviewed your application and initially you had come down and you would ask to cut a path to bring kayaks down, correct? Yes. Yes, good. Either one of you can speak, that's fine. I don't, that's all right. Um, on today, uh, I think uh, somebody came in and was asking questions relative to bring in motorized boats and or a jet ski or what they could do down there. Um, none of us, typically we would go out to the site. None of us um, have, have been out there to look at it. And I'll be honest, there's a little bit of a concern if you're gonna be wanting to bring things like that down there that we should probably look at it to get an idea of, of what it is exactly, where you want to cut, how wide. Uh, there's a difference between a path uh, simply just to carry a kayak down and or access to bring down some sort of mechanized vehicle uh, to to use to launch boat or, or a jet ski. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I think Typically what the board would do is we would go out and we do a site inspection. Usually it's on a Saturday or Sunday and then right before our next meeting. And then once we do that, then we would have a better understanding of, you know, what the, what the land looks like and how you plan on getting down there. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. His question is what do they, the neighbors do on that lake? That's why uh, his curiosity what do people if do I could, around that uh, lake? Yeah, that's a, that's a, yeah, no, I understand. I understand. Mm -hmm. um, I just, for, for the record, could you just state your name, please? My name is Sonia Connolly. I'm working with Carlos. Thank you. Are you out? So, all right. So typically, like I said, with projects like this, where there is no prior paths or anything along those lines, we would go down and take a look at the property and then we would have a better understanding of what, uh, what you want to do. Um, mm -hmm. So Victoria, when's our next meeting? So I believe um, you want to do September 19th. The 19th rather than the 12th, because I'm going to be away. Yes. Okay. And we've, all right. So, we have contact information for obviously for Carlos uh, and, and his representative. Yes. Oh, okay. So what we'll do is we will contact you folks and let you know when we're going to go out there and do an inspection. Like I said, uh, we may do it. We may do it this weekend mm -hmm. um, because I'm going to be gone uh, the week around the next meeting, so I won't be around. 
uh, and then we'll have a better understanding of what you want to do. And one of you people, you people can show us either one, uh, what you want to do and, and, and how you want, how you plan on getting down there and, and what you want to do once you get to the water's edge. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's easier that we can just make a little path to get to the, the, the lake that we we'll be able to get there? Because right now it's like, a, um, it's hard to get to the lake. You think you can so, just clear a little path and just going to the lake? That we... No, no, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm telling you, dear. Right. So you're asking us permission to do that. We mm -hmm. need to go out and look at that to see oh. what you what you want to do. After mm -hmm. we look at after we look at the location and and the site where you want to do this, mm -hmm. where you want to put the path, then at our next meeting we can vote on it. But none of us have been out to oh. the site to see exactly what it is so it's we have to inspect it first oh i understand okay okay I, we understand i we appreciate it thank you yeah not none of us have been out there some of the other sites i've been out to but I, nobody's been out to this site yet so we'll probably try to get out there in the next week or two we will call mm -hmm. you or, or or email you and let you know when we're going to be out there and if somebody wants to meet us on site then they can show us exactly what you want to do and then we'll have a better understanding and, and, and we can make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, About the, uh, this question for the people for the conservation land, do they know what they do around the lake there? So I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. It's a, it's a rather small uh, uh, pond. Um, it's not very deep, I don't think. Uh, there may be some it's fishing cheaper. in there. I don't. I don't know. I have. I don't know of anybody that's brought any kind of uh, boat down there. It, it seems awful small. It's choked right. full of milfoil too, Kevin. Yeah. It, it. Well, that's true too. So there's probably a lot of weeds in there also. So it might be better for canoes and kayaks and things like that. Mm -hmm. So when we go down there and take a look, we'll see. But I don't. There is no laws that the conservation commission has as to what you can do in the pond. The mm -hmm. pond belongs to the, the pond belongs to the state. So you might want to check with the state rules and regulations on, on what you can do in certain ponds and bodies of water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, all right. you also thanks again. And you're welcome. Bye bye. Okay. Bye now. So bye, next bye, on our bye. agenda, we have a continued notice of intent public hearing. I will call back to order. This is for 11 GM way. The applicant is Richard Souza. The owner is Kenneth Resendiz and the representative is Byron Holmes from Holmes Engineering. The scope of work is construction of a single family home. Again, this is a public hearing. You can follow along at our website under the Conservation Commission current filings uh, and you can pull, pull that up. Uh, do we have Byron here tonight? Or yeah, I'm here, Kevin. Excellent, Byron. Thank you. Um, anyone else with your team tonight? Uh, not that I see. I don't think anybody else logged on yet. Oh. You're stuck with just All me. Right. No, that's Byron. That's fine, right? So um, la last we met, I think there was a, an overall uh, sense of no issues taken with the, the proposed project. Uh, the only yeah. issue was we hadn't received a DEP file number uh, and there was an outstanding item of an alternative analysis. Additionally, we wanted to have the wetlands delineation reinvigorated and we would go out to do a site inspection. So the wetland delineation was done and offsets and, and that was all done. We went and did the site inspection. We've since received the DEP file number. Victoria, uh, were there any comments on the DEP file number uh, paperwork that we received from DEP? No. No. Okay, so that only left the alternatives analysis, Byron. Uh, right. And I will tell you, and it's on our it's on our website. I read that alternatives analysis, and well done, my friend. Thank you. That, that was, uh, I've read a lot of them, and uh, that one was uh, to the point, and uh, it made perfect sense, so even, even I could understand it. So that was, that was good. Thank you. I, I take it, Byron, you had no comment. Um, do you want to just give us the overall gist? There are certain 
questions that need to be asked and answered relative to this. Is this going to be some sort of taking or infringement on the wetlands and the wildlife? Uh, additionally, there are requirements relative to how much overall riverfront area you can uh, you can alter. So could you speak a little bit on, uh, in addition to the public water and overall uh, drinking water quality and stormwater management, can you can you just touch upon those real briefly? Sure. Um, yeah, there is a rare species out there in this area. It's the diamondback terrapin. Um, we didn't have a response from National Heritage when the hearing was open, but we have since got that. And they've said that it, uh, the project as it was designed was not would not adversely affect the habitat. In their opinion, the project met the standards of issuance for an order of conditions with regards to rare species. Um, and then following that, after we had the meeting uh, at the site on July 1st, we submitted the alternative analysis to DEP on July 9th. And they accepted that. Um, the only, they put a note on it, what really wasn't so much a comment, it's just a note um, pointing the commission to the uh, direction that under 310 CMR, uh, 1058 4D 1A of the wetlands regs, uh, you can approve it, a project up to 10% disturbance within the 200 foot riverbank, as long as certain conditions are met. We submitted um, our response to all of those commit, all of those in the um, alternatives analysis, a copy of which we also sent to your board. Um, and the, the upshot is, there's 11.9 acres of riverfront area on this site alone, and we're only going to disturb uh, eight tenths of an acre, so it's 6.72 percent. And if you looked at the whole subdivision, we're only going to be impacting four percent of the riverfront on that whole project. Um, the other thing I'd like to note is that the area where this disturbance is is already disturbed. I think you'd agree when you were out there there was an ATV track put there by the current owner several years ago. And that's where the house is going. So we're, we're really not impacting um, any of the wetland area other than that 200 foot and some of the little bit of the uh, 100 foot buffer zone. But every place that we're going in is already disturbed. Okay. Uh, all of the drainage issues, of course, were resolved during the original application for the seven lot subdivision. Um, so I think we've, well, we obviously satisfied DEP with the alternatives analysis because they, before they had refused to issue the file number and they have now. Um, and I think that we've, in my opinion, we've adequately answered any of the questions um, that the commission would have to entertain in order to give the allowance of the 10, up to 10% disturbance. Well, Hard to argue with that kind of logic there, Byron. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, usually if they had a comment, they would send it follow, a follow up with the DEP file number. Um, and again, after reading the alternatives analysis, after receiving the comment from Natural Heritage and no comment from DEP, I think it is, uh, that, is a, a, uh, that is the safe assumption. Um, all right, does anybody from the board or from the general public have any uh, questions or comments? If you do, just get our attention, state your name. If you're a resident or an interested party, you can go ahead and ask your question. Not? I'm all set. All right, from the, all right, perfect. Yeah, thanks again for having us out there. I appreciate your patience. There is a bit of a process to this, Byron, as you know. Uh, but it was uh, informative uh, for us to get out there. And there were some uh, outstanding views of uh, Sonnet Bay and, and all. So thanks again. Okay, uh, if, there are no other if there are no other comments or questions, then I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make that motion. Thank okay. you. Motion is being supported. Thank you. Motion is being supported. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Charlie Sullivan, aye. Keith Mello. Aye. Keith Mello, aye. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret French, aye. Kevin DeMaris, aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So now the public hearing is closed. Now we just have to vote on this. So th there was, uh, and because there was a lack of comment, 
uh, there was no need to revise the plans. Um, so these are the plans of record. This would be plan set dated. Oh, where is it? Here it is. Date April 12th. Is that correct? All right. All right. If there is no other comment, uh, again, outstanding job with the alternative analysis. So I'll entertain a motion that we approve the plans as submitted. Uh, plan dated a, uh, April 12th, 2022. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion, motion made and supported. We'll put a special on the motion. Hearing none, all those in favor say by saying aye. Roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Charlie Sullivan, aye. Keith Mello. Aye. Keith Mello, aye. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret French, aye. Kevin DeMaris, aye. Motion passes unanimous. All right, Byron, just give us a, a few days. Obviously, we've got the appeal period. Just give us a few days to get the paperwork done up and signed, and then uh, <clears throat> we'll get it out to you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. All right. <clears throat> Next on our agenda, so item number three, I will call back to order. We'll continue notice of intent public hearing at the 231 Middleborough Road. The applicant is Craig Cabral. The owner is Diane Cabral. Our two sons, Revoc Revocable Family Trust. Representative is Darren Michaelis of Foresight Engineering, Inc. The scope of work is to raise, elevate an existing structure and construct new foundation, septic, force main, and water line. Uh, I called that public hearing back to order. Uh, last we met, there was a continuation of the public hearing due to the fact that we uh, were still awaiting um, the uh, comment from Natural Heritage. This is uh, located on the banks of Long Pond. Uh, do we have Darren Michaelis here or somebody to represent this project? I am here. Good evening, um, Good evening. So Darren Michaelis from Foresight Engineering. Um, we still do not have comments back from Natural Heritage. Um, we are over our 30 days, so I would kind of ask the board if we're good with the meeting to approve pending. I have reached out to Melanie Cheeseman and uh, Emily Holt at NHSP and sent them all the filings over again. Um, so I'm not sure what the holdup is, but anyways, I'll present the uh, project to you. So at 231 Middleware Road, we have two existing dwellings. Uh, there's a small cottage down in the water. That's the cottage that we wish to raise, build a, <coughs> a flood elevation approved foundation underneath that dwelling so that the dwelling will be above the flood elevation of 57 put that dwelling back down on the same footprint. We're also at the same time gonna convert the existing tight tank to a septic tank, install a pump tank down by the water with a force main pumping the system all the way up to right behind the existing dwelling at the roadside of Middleware Road for 231. And there will be a micro fast treatment system followed by a quick four plus raised leach field. Uh, we're also installing a new water line at the time since the water line and sewer lines are supposed to be certain distances apart and we have no idea exactly where the water lines are. Uh, we'll be doing a general <laughs> easement down that shared driveway, putting two new water lines for the abutting property also and the two force mains, ours and the abutting property also. <clears throat> I've kept the work as far from the pond as possible. Uh, we're pumping way up the hill outside of the 100 foot setback from the wetlands. Um, and we're putting in a micro fast system to handle the four bedrooms. Uh, I think it's a good, good resolve for what's out there now, which is a tight tank and a failing 1980s uh, flow diffuser system. I'm happy to answer any questions. How much sleep did you lose trying to design this? Oh yeah, this was a fun one. Um, just trying to do them both at the same time was made it easier for me, but it was a tight fit. Right. Uh, we basically had to do the treatment because of the existing garage there, we would have needed retaining walls and would have been really close to that existing garage. So the treatment made more sense, especially where they're both multiple dwellings and probably gonna be rented out to different people. Treatment will give the septic a better solution for cleaning. And then we're, we're right near the wetlands and we're right near the pond, so it makes sense. And, and by using the treatment system, as you say, uh, the, the purpose of that is so you can have a smaller field is what, the significance, correct? Correct. So by doing a treatment system, we can reduce it by 50%. I think I reduced it by about 40%, uh, maximize the space we had, and that prevents us from encroaching on either property line and the actual existing garage with our grading. 
All right. And you have already gone through your public hearing process for uh, the health department, Board of Health. Yep. And um, we have our DEP number. We just don't have natural heritage yep. back for some reason. And it's been over the 30 days? Correct. It's 35 days today. All right. And in your experience, um, in my experience with two existing it? dwellings, that usually not much comments. I would not see an adverse take because there's there's just no land to take. So um, they've got to let the septic situation be resolved. So in my opinion, I wouldn't expect a comment back from them. I agree. I agree on that. Um, and I, I I think too. Do they typically after the thirty days would they typically then send a letter saying that we're okay with it? I guess that's nope. another question that I have. <laughs> No, right. no, I've never, no. I've never received that either. It's the same as the board oh, of health. Right. When your 45 days are up, you just walk in and pull your permit. Right, right. If, um, <clears throat> excuse me, if at the end of the day, they decide after the 30 days, they want to have comments, uh, then they could certainly try to, I guess, appeal the decision of our, our commission. Correct. Uh, but, and I, I'm uh, sure Craig uh, would be happy to meet most. I don't expect them to be severe comments. So I'm sure if they had comments. We would no, I, I, I wouldn't either. Right. To your point, I think you made uh, you know, we've got an old system from the 80s that is uh, probably not working as good as it should. It's yep. in need of, uh, uh, you know, you're going to be putting in new water lines and sewer lines, which is going to be better for everything. Um, so uh, and I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. You're not in, impacting the wetlands at all. You're not doing so. Yeah, and raising um, the dwelling down by the water is definitely a better solution. If you've been down there, the water pretty much floods right around everything right now. So picking that up right. will definitely help out the homeowners. So can you can you speak a little bit to the to the means and methodology? What uh, if you if you know? Uh, what yep. So so there? what I I I believe Craig is going to raise the dwelling on this property because it's in pretty good shape. So he's pretty much going to just pick the house right up about two or three feet. They'll take out mm -hmm. the supports that are there. Uh, and they'll construct a flood elevation wall, which will have the breakaway windows uh, and any vents that are needed. And I, I believe he's working with ASAP to have that designed. And he, we're going to do the same on the abutting dwelling too, which is the next presentation. So uh, will there be a need to excavate a large amount of material <clears throat> from underneath there? Or uh, No, I, I would that? not believe so. I, I think it would probably be maybe a foot and a half deep at most um, because you're just putting in the frost walls. And they're going to be breakaway yep. walls anyway, so you, you can't really have solid walls there. Right, because it, because it's in the flood. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so I would anticipate that most of that material then will be then taken off site. Correct. Yeah, there, there's nowhere to stockpile down there. Um, I could All also right. talk to Craig too while he's doing the two houses to maybe get a floatable silt sock out there just in the edge of the water so if anything does go in that yeah, direction I think it's at least trapped. I think having it on I think you know if just have on site the next yeah if they're going to be doing the next month or so let's face it I was just out in the pond this past weekend and it yeah, is, it's so it dry. is well with well. <laughs> it, right yeah. right um so uh I believe he wants to get going as soon as possible so yeah 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 so um <clears throat> all right uh Kevin, anybody you hear from the board yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Ke yeah, Kevin, obviously, you know, I've done plenty of work on the water before. And yeah, I fully intend on doing the uh, the um, the log rolls all around the area when we end up doing the raising of the house. The main thing I want to get done right now is a septic system because they're lousy. So I, I just want to get that cleaned up right away. The raising pot, that's going to we'll be doing that with um, ASAP later on. But the big thing is getting a septic system in so it's cleaned up down there. Sure. Uh, and just for the record, if you could just state your name, Craig. Craig Cabral. Property Thank owner. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, all right. Are there any other questions or comments, either from the general public or from the board? All right. Uh, that being said, um, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Motion made in support. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Charlie, aye. Keith Mello. Aye. Keith, aye. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret, aye. Kevin Demers, aye. Uh, motion passes. Uh, so 
my only my only concern is I think would be twofold, right? Well, maybe three if you want. Uh, one, the stockpiling of material uh, not to be done on site. So any any of the spoils that we're removing needs to be lo- loaded out yep. and, and, and taken off site, right? We're not going to reuse it on site, spread it out anywhere or anything like that. Correct. Um, yeah, we're not planning on right. filling anywhere. Right, because then we get into... Okay. Uh, additionally, uh, the siltation booms for the lake. Again, I don't think we're going to be in jeopardy this year, but uh, we should have those on site. And additionally, um, hydraulic uh, cleanup kit and fuel spill kit. Typically, good operators are going to have them on site. We especially like to have them on site in and around the uh, wetlands and or the pond uh, here, particularly because uh, you don't, you know, we get a hydraulic line breaks in the driveway, you get a heavy rain. Yep. Uh, so uh, typically you can buy those kits. Like I said, most good operators are going to have them. So if we, uh, usually that's a condition that we have in, in addition to the, uh, the boom. Um, and again, uh, with no comment from Natural Heritage, I feel comfortable. It's been at the 30 days. They will have an additional 21 should they find any kind of issue with this that they could then go uh, and appeal our decision if they if they must. So, um, anybody else have anything? All right. Then I'll entertain a motion that we approve the plans as submitted uh, with the conditions that stockpiling not take place on the site if they remove that day and that uh, the, what did you call it down the boom? The floatable the silt sock. The floatable, <coughs> the floatable. Silt, the floatable silt curtain. Yep. Yeah. And the uh, hydraulic, yeah, and the hydraulic fuel uh, spill kit um, be on site. I'll have to so take that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, motion main support. Thank you. Motion main support. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Charlie, a roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Charlie says aye. Keith Mello. Aye. Keith says aye. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret says aye. Kevin Damaris says aye. Motion passes unanimously. Again, uh, give us a few days to get the paperwork taken care of and we'll. Uh, We'll send that out to you. Yep. Uh, next on our agenda, we have the adjacent property. It's 233 Middleborough Road. This is a continuation of a notice of intent public hearing. This is again, uh, the applicant is Craig Cabral. The owner is Craig Cabral and Corey Cabral. Representative is Darren Michaelis, Foresight Engineering. And again, the work is to raise the existing structure, elevate it, and construct new foundation, septic force main and water line. For those interested parties on the website, you can follow along under the Conservation Commission, go to our page, current filings, you can uh, follow along with the plan. Uh, So uh, that being said, again, Darren, for the record. Yep, Darren Michaelis from Foresight Engineering here on behalf of Mr. Cabral. So at 233 Middleware Road, we just have one dwelling down at the water, uh, basically no foundation right now, standing on post uh, with an outhouse as a septic. Uh, we're proposing to install a <clears throat> H20 septic tank, an H20 pump tank, monolithic, uh, with a new force main pumping the water up away from the pond outside the 200 foot and outside the 100 foot of the uh, bordering vegetated wetlands. Again, it'll be a raised system, quick fours. Uh, we had a better perk rate on this property, so I wasn't required to put in a uh, fast system to make this one work. So we're just gonna have a conventional system uh, the two force mains will be in the same trench and the two new water lines will be in the same trench, uh, right. 10 feet apart, we're hoping. And any questions? Uh, same idea with the foundation. We're going to pick the foundation up and reconstruct the home. Uh, and I would expect the same uh, comments that Kevin just had on the other project. Yeah, this is a second verse, same as the first kind of deal. Yeah. We're proposing the same type of work. Um, Still, right, no comment. It's the, it's the very same scenario, right? You sent it in. It's yep. been 35 days. We've received no comment. We have a DEP file number. No outstanding comments on that. Um, means and methodology is the same. You've gone through Board of Health. And 
for the love of God, it's an outhouse. Yes. So. <laughs> Definitely an improvement. <laughs> right on the pond. So couldn't be any yeah, closer right to on the, the pond. pond. God bless it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Existing septic. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shnikes. Um, yeah, it's anyway. pretty much underwater most of the year. So perfect. Yeah. Uh, does uh, anybody from the public or, or from the board have any comments or questions? Okay. Um, that being said, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I make that motion. Thank you. Okay. Motion's been made and supported. And for discussion on a motion, hearing none, uh, all those in favor of why we're saying aye. Roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Charlie Sullivan, aye. Keith Mello. Aye. Keith Mello, I. Margaret French. I. Margaret French, I. Kevin Damaris, I. Motion passes unanimous. Um, so I think we should impose the same uh, conditions uh, mm -hmm. prior to. Uh, note 12, I'm going to assume. Let me see if I can't. Okay. So, yeah. And just tell us a little bit about the decommissioning of the, of the existing uh, cesspool. Yeah, so being just a uh, an outhouse, it'll it's just going to be a small privy there. So we'll pump any sewerage out that's in there, any debris, and we'll fill that in with clean sand and make sure it's compacted. So there won't be any excavation right there. It'll just be a matter of pumping out any sewerage or solids that are in there and packing it with clean sand. Yes, which is the note is in compliance with uh, what is it? Title five. CMR, yep. three, oh, 310 three ten CMR Title five. Yep. 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 Okay. Um, all right, that being said, I will entertain a motion to approve the plans as submitted with the aforementioned conditions that in fact, the uh, stockpile not take place on site and that the uh, silt sock curtain be on site and the fuel hydraulic oil spill kit be on site. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion makes board. Any further discussion on the motion? Turn on all of the favor, signify by saying aye. Roll call vote. Charlie Sullivan. Aye. Charlie says aye. Keith Mello. Aye. Keith Mello says aye. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret says aye. Kevin Damaris, aye. Motion passes unanimous. All right, we'll get that stuff out to you as quick as we can. And yes, uh, Craig, thank you. I would encourage you to get those septic systems going as as soon as possible <laughs> all right hey, thank, thank you kevin right. thank you guys all right have a great night guys you too thank you all right item number five we have an interview with janine yeah. for the town janine is here uh kevin if i may yes sir you go right ahead charlie i am going to leave the meeting now if you don't mind uh i have another meeting at seven uh, I did advise Victoria. I don't know if she advised you, but yeah, no, so she I'm, absolutely let me know, Charlie, and that's why I was okay. trying. I was trying to blast through this stuff. So yes, go ahead and go uh, to your next meeting, my friend. All righty, you take care. Everyone have a good night. Okay. Have a good night, Charlie. All right. We'll Bye, Charlie. You, Charlie. Night, Charlie. Okay, is Janine here? So Janine is not here. She sent me an email. Um, and let me know that she was unable to get Zoom downloaded onto her laptop and to log on. Um, she said okay. that an in-person in meeting uh, would be preferable for her. Perfect. So we will try to accommodate her. We can, you know, in the next coming weeks, we'll do a short one. And maybe at the same time, we can reach out to the, see if the open space, uh, excuse me, consultants and the current members of the town forest committee would like to join us. So, all right, okay. we can do that. Perfect. Um, so the, item, the next item, this is a conservation land use request form. So uh, recently uh, there have been some inquiries, inquiries from outside parties uh, that relative to use of not only town lands, but some conservation properties, just general overall questions. We realized we had no form or, or, or system to deal with these. <clears throat> so Victoria, 
had gathered some from other towns, sent them out to the board members. I asked that we do some minor review. And I think, Victoria, were you able to put online the uh, the final, uh, what we came up with or what I was talking to you about? Yeah, I didn't post it online. I sent everyone an email and I'm screen sharing it now in case anyone didn't have a chance to look at it because um, it was okay. last minute. Um, yeah. yeah, no, no, that, that's fine. Not much. So bottom line is there was a form from the town of Somerset and there was a form from the town of Newberry. And quite honestly, I like the first and front page of the town of Newberry for its simplicity. Uh, we added a couple other departments for a comment on there. Um, but the town of Somerset had some uh, information on there relative to the you know, event description, more specific to what the actual event is, how many people would be there, what they're going to be doing, insurance information if need be. You know, are they going to need the road? That, are they going to be selling food? That kind of stuff. And so I think what Victoria ended up doing was putting them all together in one form. And what I would ask is that if people could just do a brief review of it and comment on that um, for our next meeting, and then uh, we can either uh, adopt it at our next meeting. Uh, I, would, I would encourage, if you have any comments, to just forward them to Victoria during the week. She can make those comments for consideration at our next meeting. Okay. Does anybody have um, issues with? Oh, I, yes, I have yeah, a quick question. Um, Please. Can people rent or or use town property if they are a for-profit organization, or do they have to be nonprofit? Nope, they can be for-profit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just noticed yeah. that so, was not a question on the form, and I don't know if that's something we would want. So on. Um, uh, I'm going through the paperwork now. Uh, actually, it's on the Somerset one. It's not a question that I thought uh, that I thought was a must on ours. And I mean, like they also asked, is the applicant a resident of Somerset? Now, I'm imagining that they have three different prices or costs, if there are any, which is why they ask very specifically, is it a commercial entity, nonprofit entity, or if you are a Somerset resident. So I wasn't going down that road relative to what the cost of these things were. Uh, most of these things, and, and again, this is try to work in concert. We're going to then bring this idea to the selectmen for other town parcels and parts, maybe parts and rec when we have one open space committee for their consideration. This isn't a document that's gonna probably go into effect right away. Um, so yeah, maybe that's something that we can probably add those uh, questions on there. Uh, but I think that that was the genesis of those questions is so they could charge different rates. All right. Okay. Cool, a well, good question though, thank you. Uh, all right, next item on our agenda, we have the minutes from August 8th, 2022. And thank you very much, Victoria. We have been right on schedule. Have a meeting, have some minutes. So <laughs> thank you. No problem. Uh, all right. And uh, again, I take no exception, but I will defer to our resident proofreader, Margaret. Proofreader, you've had a chance to. You're all set with him. I am all good. Sorry, I, 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 it was a little bit gobbled. Did she say she's good? Yep, she's good. Perfect. That being said, then I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes as submitted for August 8th of 2022. I'll make that motion. Thank you. I'll, su I'll support it. Thank you very much. Motion is supported. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Roll call vote. Keith Mello. Aye. Keith Mello, aye. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret French, aye. Kevin DeMaris, aye. Motion passes unanimously. And again, Victoria, I know we were set on Zoom, but just make sure the minutes reflect that Charlie Sullivan had left the meeting prior to uh, uh, the discussion on the uh, uh, mm -hmm. interview. Uh, okay. And if there's nothing else to properly come before the board, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make it. 
I'll support it. Thank you. Motion is made supported to adjourn. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Roll call. Uh, Keith Mello. Aye. Keith Mello, aye. Margaret French. Aye. Margaret French, aye. Kevin DeMaris, aye. Motion passes the unanimous. All right, folks, thank you very much. Uh, be safe. And uh, we'll get in touch with you relative to an inspection time to get over to that parcel over there on Washburn. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, bye, guys. guys. We'll see you. Bye, bye now. Have a good bye -bye. night. Bye -bye. You too. Yeah, bye-bye.